YouTube Live. I really hate this YouTube thing. The internet can totally see you now. Alright, so. Hey, this is Dave from TV Games. I'm starting this over because for some reason my internet crashed when I was doing this the first time. And I did not see that I was not live anymore. So, if you saw the last stream. Whatever, let's just start fresh. Hi, this is Dave from TV Games, and I wanted to do something different. Um, I don't normally play video games on this channel, but I figured uh, I'm going to try something new for a few reasons. First of all, my schedule is kind of tight lately, so getting up new videos in a timely manner has been close to impossible. Uh, the reason for that is because of the editing, and I work late, and I'm in the middle of a move right now, so it's a good thing because there is um, a lot of noise here in, in the city. I live in uh, Queens, New York, for those that uh, are interested in that, but um, the reason that it's so hard to sometimes get a video done here is because it's so damn noisy. Between... Uh, my neighbors between outside noise. Play I'm near an airport too. So right there that's a that's a big kick in the pants. Um Yeah, so hopefully once I am settled down in a new place in a quieter neighborhood, I will be able to get things done more quickly and efficiently, but that's you know I'm saying that now. Who knows what's gonna happen in the future. But anyway, the game we're playing today, after that long spiel, that minute and a half spiel, is Time Pilot by Konami, 1982, or the American version by Centauri, Centuri, Centuri? I forgot how it's pronounced, in uh, 1983 in the US. So uh, a little history behind this game before I start playing. It was uh, designed in, by Yoshiki Akamoto. I had to write that down. I uh, can't memorize things right now. Uh, for Konami, he was hired as a graphic artist, but his boss told him to just go and design a game. Because back in the 80s, you could design a game uh, no matter what you did. If you're the janitor and you had a good idea, go design a game. You know, it was a little bit easier back then. It wasn't something that required years and years of training and practice. I mean, you needed a little bit of talent. You could, anyone can make maybe like a king, king and balloon. Look that one up. But only a few people can make like Super Mario Brothers or Donkey Kong back then. Um, anyway, don't mind me. I'm just drinking a little wine here. Because that's the best way to fly. With a little buzzed. So anyway, uh, Akamoto, Akamoto was told to make a driving game by his boss. But uh, he just kind of paid him lip service showing him documents about his driving game, but in the background he was actually programming a uh, th this flying game you see here in the attract mode. And um, luckily the game was a hit because his boss wasn't mad, but it did also mean that his boss took credit for the game. Uh, Akamoto, Akamoto being the bigger man and in Japan making sure you know there's a big thing about honor, he didn't rat him out. However, after making Gyrus in 83, he moved on to Capcom in 1984, and uh, he made in 88 uh, Forgotten Worlds, which was ported to the Genesis, but the arcade version is still the best because it has the spinner that's also a button. It's like, it's, it's like a push spinner. So while you're spinning, you could also push down the fire, which is kind of a cool little control uh, feature. I think the only other game that I remember a few games had a push pull spinner, or one of the one or the other. But uh, the other one you might remember is Disc Citron had a push pull spinner, so it was a button and a spinner. Uh, but then later on, he co-developed both Final Fight and Street Fighter II, so he's kind of legendary. This is one of his first games. Let's enjoy it together, shall we? All right, I gotta change my screen here, so bear with me. I'm watching my performance. On the uh, on my phone at the same time. All right, entering a virtual coin. I'm using main, by the way, of course, because I don't have an arcade machine in in my uh, room hooked up to the internet because I'm not that uh, sophisticated. I did actually have an arcade machine, like a main machine, for a uh, for quite a few years actually. Uh, I'm not doing too well right now. Uh, it was. Really awesome, but it was a pain in the ass to keep 
keep working. Okay, I'm a little rusty, so bear with me. I'm gonna take off my headphones so I could hear and stop clicking my tongue. Uh, the reason I'm doing this, the second reason I'm doing this, besides the uh, just maybe putting a little video game action on my channel, so my channel name isn't so outdated, uh, it's hard to get videos up nowadays. I think I was going into that before, but between editing and writing, it is, and my job and my other obligations, it's just impossible to get these out in a timely manner. Uh, according to the YouTube gods, or at least people who know the the algorithm, you have to have a video up semi-frequently. You know, maybe not once every day, like I, you know, damn. I know some YouTubers who could like upload every day, but I'm not that kind of person because I just <laughs> I don't have the time, unfortunately. Uh, that was terrible. That was literally the worst thing I've ever done in a, vi in a video game. All right. A little tip here, by the way. If you let that thing just go, you can build up points without leaving the level. But easier said than done because that thing fires at you relentlessly. So, I didn't really announce this live stream. I just kind of did this off, uh, just unannounced because I don't want to... I kind of want to see how this plays out. I'm not entirely sure if this is something I want to do either frequently or even semi-frequently because you don't know the half of it, but setting this all up was a bitch. Seriously, I had to sit here and check the levels and add the thing. I had a problem with YouTube before when I don't like streaming to YouTube too much because it seems to have a problem uh, keeping me posted on what my video looks like. I have to actually use my phone right now to kind of keep uh, keep tabs on it. Okay, getting the hang of this again. Here's a tip. Avoid everything. Yeah, not like that. We'll play a game again in a second. Uh, do I get a high score at least? Yes, I do. AAA was my first, uh, my test attempt, by the way, and I, uh, for a test attempt, I got 17,000, so... Uh, let's see how I could do when I'm really trying. So, yeah, the thing about YouTube is that sometimes you gotta play this stupid game, not this game, not Time Pilot, but... Where you have to upload stuff, and if you see my videos, you know, either you like them or you don't, and that's fine, but having to have having to have those all out like once a week or twice a month, or bi weekly at least, it, it's a, they say once a week. I can't do once a week, that's impossible. Uh, so, this is my attempt at finding a stopgap solution in between weeks where I'm still working on current videos, which is the case this week. I wanted to have it out. Uh, yesterday, or today, today's Tuesday, uh, wasn't in the cards because it's just, you know, a lot of stuff to do. I, know, I, know, I, put, I put a little bit of effort into them, I like to say. Um, so, yeah, there's that. I was actually just thinking the other day, uh, earlier when I started doing this, um, the old YouTube of 19, not 19, 2005, you know, everyone keeps complaining about YouTube. I don't complain about YouTube too much because at the end of the day, it's just a platform. And, you know, if you're using it to make a living, that's one thing, which you probably shouldn't. Who, who am I to talk, though? But, uh, uh, when YouTube first came out in, uh, 2005, this is before Google's ownership, it was, it was a little amazing. And let me explain why after I shoot this squadron and capture this guy. Okay. There were things on TV, and we're going back to maybe 50s, 60s, 70s, even 80s. And you know what? I'll be generous and say 90s as well. Just a lot of stuff on TV that have not been seen. Oh, free guy and crash at the same time. That have not been seen by uh, by anyone in in years. They were lost. Not lost officially, but they just weren't aired. Uh, we're talking about performances by by famous musical artists, uh, television med commercials, and YouTube was a place for people to upload themselves and make videos. I mean, back then, videos were like just 
There were a few people, but we're talking about the early days of YouTube, and what was that guy's name? Fred, who used to talk with the annoying voice? It was dark days. Uh, but there was a lot of TV performances that were lost forever, and they were there was an abundance of them. And I remember spending, not to sound like I'm quoting The Office here, but I spent like maybe an entire week just taking that all in. It was amazing from a television history perspective, from a historical perspective. Um, I forgot when Google took over YouTube, bought YouTube, didn't take it over, they bought it. It wasn't like they came in with uh, torches and pitchforks. It was, uh, it was kind of a dark day, damn it. Because Viacom decided that now that they had some money in their pocket, Everything that made YouTube great for the people who weren't interested in watching a funny voiced teen say stupid things, um, all that stuff came down. Because that's just the way lawyers are. That's the way business works. It's not fair. It's kind of odd to think that that would actually be a threat. Because this is the early days of YouTube when we're going back to 2005 to 2010. It wasn't high definition, because again, these clips were low definition, were standard definition anyhow, but still, you're watching them in 10 minute pieces, they were on a small screen, making them huge, like full screen, was near impossible, and you weren't exactly turning, you know, being able, you weren't able to sell them or anything, or make profit off of them, they were just a way of sharing history, and they all came down. Uh, nowadays, there's a lot of good television history, but there's still, there's still a lot of stuff that was cool, especially the musical performances. Um, I want to say, like, Prince. And I know it's Michael Jackson is not uh, popular these days. I know, you know I'm not going to go into why. You look that up. Uh, but, you know, Rare Jackson 5 performances. Rare. Oh, God, who else was on there? Just a lot of stuff. I mean, Smothers Brothers hour or something. I remember there were some clips in there. I don't know how they got them, but you know, kudos to those who shared them. If I could go back in time, I'd definitely download those and save them. And uh, it's sad what's lost from YouTube. I'm going to start out the game here. Um, that brings me into another topic, and I'm talking about television history. Go back, if if you're watching this, either now or later, if you go back and watch my video on VCR Golf, I kind of go into a little melancholy spiel at the end, text, uh, like a, a text spiel, my god. <laughs> I'm usually better at this game. I go into a text spiel about how VCR, the production of VCR has ended just recently when I uploaded that video, which is maybe two years ago. Because that was maybe two or three years ago at this point. Um, and what scares me nowadays is that even though my generation, or at least or I don't care about what's being lost nowadays, there is going to be a complete lack of saving of, uh, of broadcast, broadcasting. And you might say to me, uh, well, Dave, who cares, you know, besides the fact that it's not as interesting as it used to be in the early outlaw days of television, not outlaw, you know, like, you can do anything you want to, but it was less, uh, it was less mechanical, I want to say. They were prone to errors, and there were craziness, there was craziness happening all the time, and the delay wasn't as, there wasn't like a big delay, seven second delay. That's, the spontaneity of television uh, is not going to be captured anymore. Because no one has VCRs and no one has recording devices that maintain your recordings. Nowadays, you record a program and it's gone after you watch it. And you're just recording the program. Like, a lot of people, you can... If you're tech savvy, you can save the recording digitally to a hard drive or something. But a lot of people don't do that. Now, you gotta remember, these recordings that you see... Damn it. I didn't know the freaking transport plane shot. You gotta remember, a lot of these people, you know, are not tech savvy, they, you know, work in the VCR, you just press a button, you're done, and you go back and watch the tape, rewind it, and maybe put it in your closet for another day. Like, oh, I wanna watch that episode of the Waltons I recorded off of, uh, off a of cable. Let me go dig that tape out of the, uh, the cabinet. Nowadays, you have the DVR set, 
and um, watch whatever episode of the show you want, and then it gets erased. And then, sure, if you want to go back and watch a watch an episode again, you go on to your streaming device or your on-demand with your cable company, and they, and then you watch it, but it's not the same as the broadcast. So, for example, if there was something that originally aired that they decided down the road to take out, which happens a lot with Saturday Night Live, by the way, uh, so don't say it doesn't happen, then it's it's gone. It's gone forever, and you'll never see it. And that's that's kind of unfortunate. And um, got a comment from old school New York City gamer, which uh, is that Sydney? How you doing, Sydney? Um, thank you for the comments on Stay Away to Stardom. I'm rambling about something else, but uh, thank you on that. I'll, uh, I'll I'll address that in a second, actually, because I want to just finish this thought about the uh, history of television being lost forever. Um, I think I actually covered it. Uh, we're gonna lose all that. We don't have an easy recording that we could that it's not for it's not for saving. It's for just temporarily shifting, time shifting. Uh, let me just reply to this comment because. Hey, out there on YouTube, does anyone know how to... There, I just said thanks. Okay, I got the live chat back up. I hate this YouTube platform. I used to use Twitch, but Twitch is a little annoying. I don't like it too much. Sorry to say that. Okay, uh, so old school New York City gamer. I haven't seen you in a while, by the way. I, I um... If this is the person I'm thinking of, uh, Sydney, I want to say, right? I don't know why. Um, you used to, I used to see you at Nava a few years ago, which is Digital Press, the game store in Clifton, New Jersey, which you should check out if you're in the area because I found some great stuff there as of late. I don't collect much anymore, but I, what I do collect, they've had, um, they have not disappointed. Uh, in case you want to know what I've been collecting, um, I've been collecting this box of games from the early 80s. I want to say from the pre-NES era. Back when box art was a wonderful thing. And I have to do a video on that soon because there's a good book called Art of Atari, but I'm talking about the less successful companies like Cosme. Go look up some Cosme box art, especially for Aztec Challenge. Um, it's wonderful and terrible at the same time. You know, everyone talks about Mega Man 1, but their box art is Forbidden Forest. Just crazy box art. Anyway, old school New York City uh, gamer. Uh, what, you are correct, sir. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm good. Good. Uh, I have a good memory. Um, my game just got lost. Where'd I go? Um, I need a second monitor here. Uh, yeah, so, let's talk about the Stay Away to Stardom episode. Uh, thank you very much for the compliment. That took me, like, forever to do. Uh, if you haven't seen that, you don't have to watch my episode, but definitely look up Stay Away to Stardom, because... Especially if you're into bad public access television, because that was the gold standard of bad public access. Uh, there is the gold standard, the good public access, too, which I briefly touched upon. And I might want to go back and start watching some of those shows. Um, what are some of the shows I'm thinking of right now? Uh, I'm having a brain fart. It's... Well, the Chris Gethler show, I saw, I saw a little bit of. And that's a good show. It's not... Um, my God. It was, the, it was one of the shows... I, you know what? Forget it. I can't remember it. <laughs> my brain is shot. It was one of the clips I showed. And I want to say... Could someone shoot me? I don't know. Shoot me a, a hint? I don't want to look it up right now. Anyway. Case in point, it looks very interesting. Then there's, then there's also Midnight Blue, which I didn't cover. And I had clips for Midnight Blue. Uh, that was the show that was developed by Al Goldstein, who was the editor of Screw. I, I believe the creator. And that show ran for like, I want to say a few decades. 
And that was one of the that was one of the best shows for adults on public access because while it was definitely amateurish, uh, low quality in terms of production values, and definitely a little juvenile at times, and maybe sophomoric if you're not into tawdry sex jokes and uh, and blue humor, uh, it was also quite innovative. Um, I miss going. I'm reading a comment here. Please bear with me. Old school New York gamer, Sydney. I miss going to another event. It might come out when it warms up, and I'll actually get to ride my electric bike there via the GW Bridge. The GW Bridge. That, dude, that sounds scary. <laughs> I don't know. Um, can you? Can you ride your bike over the uh, over the GW Bridge while you're um? I don't know how the GW Bridge. Actually, you know what? No, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the wrong bridge. Please don't shoot me for the uh, misinformation. There is a pedestrian pathway. I just noticed it the other day. Although one side was closed off. So I believe, yes, you can. Um, I hate taking the GW Bridge, by the way. Once I move, I'm going to avoid all bridges that are on that, that across that river. It is, uh, it's nerve-wracking. Not nerve-wracking that it's scary that you're going to die, but nerve-wracking because it is always, um, there's always traffic. I am doing terrible at this game today. It is always doing, uh, doing something terrible in terms of traffic. You can't go over that bridge and not wait like 20 minutes just to get to the actual bridge. Top level, bottom level, level doesn't matter. Uh, for those of you who don't live in New York City or not familiar with that, there is a it's a two-level bridge. You could take either or, and as long as you don't ride like a maniac, exactly, yeah. It is a two-level, okay, yeah, gotta turn. <laughs> it's a two-level bridge that is just no good choices there. Can we make 100,000 on this game? That is the question of the night. I'm going to probably do this for another 10 more minutes. There was something else I wanted to discuss. Um, checking the threads. The uh, message is here to see if there's anything new. To UW Bridge. Oh, yeah. I'm going to bitch about New York City. And uh, old school New York City gamer here. Hopefully, uh, Sydney, I don't... Uh, I'm not too disparaging to, this, to, these, uh, to the five boroughs here. But I've noticed something about New York City, and uh, first of all, making videos is hard in New York City. Uh, you can make videos if you go outside with a camera and film. That, I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, doing stupid things like voiceover and... Well, just voiceover. It's all sound. Uh, where I live right now, I am near the airport. I think I may have said this earlier, and there is just constant airplane sounds. So when I was making videos, I think I only made like five episodes here before, um, after I moved. There was always maybe like five minutes of me stopping what I'm doing to wait for the plane to pass. <laughs> you know, it's funny though, I'm living near a train, so it might be more of the same. Which rhymes. Um, the train's a little less frequent. Uh, there was a second part. Uh, this is uh, Dryerland 17. Yes, there was the second part of Time Pilot. Uh, it was Time Pilot 84. <clears throat> Excuse me, 84, I want to say. Or was it 85? Time Pilot. I know it was a year at the end. Time Pilot 84, 85. And it took place in space. It was a little different. Um. I only played it a few times and didn't didn't really impress me that much because I don't know, just wasn't as whimsical as Time Pilot, the original game. Uh, and also, Time Pilot and I go back to my childhood because Time Pilot was one of the games I got for my ColecoVision. I think the year after I got it for Christmas, so '83, I want to say I got it, and that was like my favorite game for the longest time. Uh. Let me see. I have to catch up on comments here. Yep, Time Pilot 84, you are right. That is it. Didn't like it too much, but then again, I haven't played much of it. Yeah, and I miss... Uh, let's see. I used to watch Midnight Blue in the 80s, and can guarantee you I was not supposed to, but hey, bad jokes, cursing, and boobs. You can't beat it. It reminds me a little bit, bit of... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It reminds me a little bit of the... Uh, uh, a more freeform, 
from what I've seen of it. I haven't seen it because I didn't have cable back then. But uh, if you remember back in the 90s, if you're a Howard Stern fan, he used to have a Channel 9 show, as they called it. Uh, Channel 9 is W.O.R. TV in New York, which was an independent station. And Howard Stern, for 69, uh, apropos, episodes, uh, had a show. It wasn't as dirty, but he tried to squeeze in as much as he could uh, in that hour show. Um... It was basically his radio show, but there was skits and bits, and uh, I remember he had his regular stable of characters on there every week, so he would run from the radio show and go do the, uh, the Channel 9 show once a week, and that was kind of killer for him. Um, that's what it kind of reminded me of, but more, but definitely without limits, from what I've seen. Again, I haven't seen the show, I, I'm sucking at this. Uh, thank you, Dryer Lint, on the C64. I gotta do another... I am gonna do another C64 episode, by the way. Um, basically about typing... Type in programming. I have to get through the non-video game stuff first. I have in the pipeline. The, um... Uh, I have a couple on fast food icons of the 80s. You'll see that in the, in the coming weeks. Uh, I have something about KTEL, which I kind of alluded to with my board game. And uh, I had a comment on the KTEL the other day, the KTEL board game. And it was um, saying that stuff from KTEL was not great. I'm sorry I forgot the name of the fool left the comment. Um, I will reply to that when I have a chance. Uh, the KTEL stuff in the 70s was not good. It was... It was okay. It wasn't great. Uh, the KTEL stuff of the 80s, though, was awesome because they did a lot better job for the short time in the 80s they were making the compilations. But more... More on that in the future. I don't want to waste that. Um, the Howard Stern show was overrated on Channel 9 Saturday Nights. Um, I want to say, I don't want to say overrated, but I also don't want to say underrated. I wanted to say it was rated. It was what it was. It, it was something to do on Saturday nights back in the early 90s. I want to say 91 to 92. Um, and it was something that you don't see that much on television back then. You know, it was up against, I want to say, Saturday Night Live. And back then, I don't think Saturday Night Live was all that great. I still don't think it's that great. It's a good show. It's just not appointment television for me. I'm going to give this one more try. I want to get to the damn 85 or 84 or 82, whatever. I don't know what version I'm playing, so depending on the year, I could tell you if it's Inturi or Konami. I think it's Konami. I saw the Konami logo before. Uh, there was something I want to say that the... I don't know. Something about Howard Stern, and I forgot what it was. But yeah, anyway, go back to the, to the episodes. I do want to do more Commodore 64 stuff, because... Uh, it was a fascinating little machine. And uh, type-in programming is something I'm going to be... Uh, look into. What I would really love to get, and I checked this price on eBay, and it's prohibitively expensive, so it's going to have to be emulated, but the Thompson Twins Adventure uh, Flexi Disc. That would be kind of awesome. I, I seen it was done if you watch the Oddity Archive. He actually did cover it a little bit, um, but I wish I could get a copy of that record, that Flexi Disc, and try it out for myself. And that means getting the flexi disc, hooking it up to a tape to a turntable tape player. Oh god, <laughs> I'm a little buzzed right now. Uh, hooking it up to the tape player, recording it, and then play, putting it uh, through the tape through the computer, uh, just to see what comes out. Because according to some accounts, you basically had to get a one in a million chance of getting all of the bits correct. Because, as vinyl is uh, wont to do, it gets dirty really easily, and the slightest speck of dust will change the sound quality, and that will affect uh, the little boop boop boops that you record into the tape. Which means that, uh, you know, one of the Thompson twins might not have a head or something. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen because there is just no spectrum. I don't have a spectrum, so... I think it's Spectrum only. Plus, the disc is like, is like $70 less than I saw it, which is not bad. 
but just for one off thing, mm, I'm not a Thompson Twins fan. I like some of their albums. Question. I meant to say underrated. Typo. Okay. What a fun show. Okay, I thought you thought you thought it was overrated. Uh, Dryerland 17. Do you still play Atari 2600? Not as much as I used to. Favorite games? Of course, the Activision catalog. <laughs> um, Atari 2600 games. I'm looking at my wall right now. I just yanked my microphone cord. Hang on there for a second. I just picked up a game called Skateboarding, and I just bought it strictly for the box art, which is what I'm doing nowadays. I'm buying things for the box art. Uh, but I want to give that a shot. I've actually... Uh, at the digital press event last week, we were supposed to play Outlaw. It was a one-on-one -on -one game. Uh, you know what Outlaw is. I'm not going to explain it. It was going to be a tournament-type deal where, of course, two people fought each other, and the last man standing wins. Unfortunately, the contest was canceled, and I'm kind of bummed about that because I love Outlaw. It's one of those games that it's just so stupidly simple that it's it's fun. <laughs> um, there's another game that I have. It's one on one of those double ender carts, uh, Haunted House, I believe it's called. Zaxo. I gotta look it up. Uh, hang on. Pausing. Hang tight there. Here it is. Yeah, the Zonix Double Ender. It's Spikes Peak and Ghost Manor was named the game. Um, Ghost Manor was is actually kind of a it's, it's a tough game. They're they're not great games by any stretch of the imagination, but Ghost Manor is actually quite uh, innovative in terms of just having four levels, uh, four screens you have to go through, and once you do everything, it's done. But it's just the different screens is interesting. That's all I could really describe it as. It's interesting. It's not something I play to completion because it's it's actually kind of hard. But once you do it once and the game is done. What's interesting about the game though, and this kind of is one of the examples as to the compatibility of uh, some cartridges on different hardware like the Atari 7800. Uh, it uses a black and white color switch in a unique way in that you could change your character by flicking it between black and white and color. So if you want to play as the girl, I think, you have it on black and white, and the boy, you play it as... It, it, you switch it to color. And now I know 7800, you can't so much as... It doesn't work the same way. I don't think it's a toggle. I don't think there's a black and white switch. Uh, so it doesn't work on... All Atari 2600s, or sorry, all clones like the 789 clone compatible consoles. I love that little sound effect, by the way, when you win the level. It doesn't work on all the compatible consoles because of the lack of a black and white color switch. It works, but you can only you can't character select. Which is kind of a bummer. It was nice to play as a girl sometimes. And then whoever you play as, you save the opposite character. Uh so yeah, it's interesting but not great. Dragonfire and Mega Mania. I have not played Dragonfire too much, but Mega Mania is kind of an interesting game. If you have a chance, look up the. I should stop talking and playing at the same time, right? Look up the Mega Mania commercial. I should post that uh, one day. Well, I don't have to post it. It's already online. The Mega Mania commercial is is kind of the. It has a nice little punk aesthetic to it that was kind of big in the, in that time, the early 80s. Uh, the character in the, the commercial reminds me of Fee Waybill from um, The Tubes. I don't know if uh, I'm remembering it correctly. Uh, but it was a fun little commercial, and I used to love to sing along with the commercial when I was a kid. Mega Mania. Um, actually, I gotta say, I didn't grow up with an, with an Atari. I grew up with a ColecoVision, which basically, if I had the chance, I could have played Atari on that anyway. And a lot of the games ended up between the two consoles. Time Pilot, as a matter of fact, was on the VCS. Uh, on the Telltale white cartridge by Coleco, that looks like an Atari, but much worse uh, aesthetically. Because they did that on purpose, I believe. So that makes their console look better. 
but it turns out, as I got older, and I played my friends' Ataris all the time, because everyone had Atari but me, but uh, I played a lot of their games, and I always was kind of jealous. I mean, yeah, I had, you know, we had the, the good graphics, but they had some fun-ass games. Spider-Man was a game I was jealous of. The Spider-Man Atari 2600 game by um, Parker Brothers. Which I think I played back in episode 10, that stupid episode where I just played 10 Atari games. Um, it's one of those games that's kind of fun. That's stupid, easy fun. Because it's just, you're playing, it's it's the first licensed game, so back then that was kind of novel. Not the first licensed game, but like the first Marvel game, I believe. Uh, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, by the way, because I'm just spewing nonsense sometimes. Hmm. Let me think of some more Atari games here that I love and that are not so obvious either. Ah. Dry, dry Lynch, you gave me a, a thinker. <laughs> Something to think about. Ah, I crashed again. I'm looking. Keystone Capers, that was the game that I loved back in the Atari days. That and Chopper Command. Activision games. Um, those two games to me were what made me jealous that my friends had an Atari and I did not. And I didn't have the expansion module either. Uh, yes, I know Keystone Capers was available, I believe, for the ColecoVision. I think I have it too. I do. But by the time that came out, I moved on from the ColecoVision. I was on to the Commodore 64, so I wasn't really paying attention to new releases. I was only seven when it came out, six, seven. So I actually didn't know there was a Keystone Capers for the ColecoVision until recently. Yes, the steering wheel and gas pedal to play turbo. Yes, I did. I still have it, actually. Um, and I should bust that out one day. That was actually referred to as Expansion Module 2. Which is weird, because it doesn't actually go into the Expansion Module port. An oddball. And also, I don't think the roller controller or the Super Action controllers were called... You can't see me finger quoting right now, but... Expansion Modules. Quote unquote, Expansion Modules. I'm trying to get to the fourth level. 1982, or a bust. Um, the steering wheel was cool though. It came with Turbo. Matter of fact, you couldn't play Turbo without it. And there were actually quite a few games that I learned about, again, later in life, that used the steering wheel that I was not aware of. Like Pit Stop, I think, uses it. Uh, or if not Pit Stop, Bump and Jump. I gotta double check on Pit Stop. I think it does. And I think one day I have to hook that up again and give it another shot. Um, the problem I have with hooking up the steering wheel, first of all, is that I'm afraid to ever unplug anything from my ColecoVision because of the static electricity in this apartment. Uh, and the Commodore, sorry, the ColecoVision is very susceptible, susceptible to static electricity damage. That's happened to me in the past. And the second thing is it needs four C batteries. C batteries are a special occasion battery. I don't feel like buying them. But uh, one day I'll hook it back up again. The other problem with my ColecoVision, by the way, is that it has a sh crappy picture. I'm trying not to curse. Um, and I think it's time to do a mod. If you did a mod on your ColecoVision, please let me know and let me know how that went. Uh, but I think I'm at the point now where I don't want to deal with RF anymore. And uh, I think it's time to do a little surgery on the ColecoVision. So that I can make it look nice and I can hook up the expansion module number one and that takes care of Atari as well. Um, again though, the problem is I... Part of me is like I don't want to do that to an original console, but at the same time it's like... There's like a million of them out there. Most of them work. Well, some of them work. I've broken at least two in my life. <laughs> ColecoVisions. But, um, yeah, ColecoVision. One of the first episodes I did because that was one of the first consoles I've ever played. It was the first. Donkey Kong was the first game I've ever played. And, um, to my surprise, the game I spent hours on. You know, like when I was six, seven, I got the hiccups. Uh, it was very different than the arcade version. It was close, close approximation, but it definitely wasn't 
the same once you play the arcade game. Uh, there's no hit detection with the hammer, there's no fireballs in the first level in the ColecoVision version. Uh, Donkey Kong is on the wrong side of the board. It was all, all strange to me once I played the arcade version. Like, oh, I'm great at Donkey Kong. I'm the best Donkey Kong player there is. Watch out, Steve Weeby, who didn't exist back then. Or he did, but he wasn't famous. Uh, it was uh, definitely an uh, eye-opener. Then the other game was Mousetrap, I remember. Um, do you have some favorite games you want to recommend that you remember from your childhood? Please throw it in the comments. I'm getting some action already because I see uh, Dragonfire, which I have to try out. That was an image, eye magic game, right? I believe... I can't look it up right now. Hey, this is the farthest I've gotten all night. Uh, interesting story, by the way, or not so much interesting than uh, a story. Uh, the game store I was talking about before, Digital Press, and the event, uh, NAVA, which is North American Video Game Aficionados, I believe, if I'm wrong, correct me. Uh, they do a contest every so often, and once once in a while they'll do a um, they'll do a reenactment of uh, Starcade. And for this for a couple of years ago, I was invited to play because I got hit by missiles in 1970. Damn it! And um, one of the games I picked to play um, was Time Pilot because I figured I was hot crap. You know, I'm gonna show everyone the high score in Time Pilots and win this game handily and get some worthless crap and maybe some accolades from video game fans and store employees. And little did I know that I am actually terrible at this game. Not as good as I think I am. As you can see here, I still haven't gotten to the fourth uh, board. At least I got to the top of the high score table. Uh, so anyway, turns out, not so good. I had the lowest score of the day. Uh, our team lost, and uh, we were asked to leave the store in, in disgrace. Just kidding, we just, nothing happened. <laughs> it was just a friendly game. Starcade. I think they're bringing that back, actually, aren't they? Or someone was in talks to bring that back? Thank you. Yes, I magic. Um, I put a lot of emulators on my Wii. I've been playing Casey Munchkin on the Odyssey too. You have to scream Casey Munchkin, by the way, because the exclamation point. That's that's the most important uh, thing. But yes, Casey Munchkin. We were actually playing Casey Munchkin at at the um, digital press the other day, and it's much more fun when the controller actually works. <laughs> Because when I, when I was playing it for my episode on the Odyssey, my controller was very broken. And it wasn't the controller, it was the port, because I had to switch them in the back and it still was broken. And you put a lot of emulators on your Wii. Uh, I've been thinking about doing that. Actually, you bring up a good point, Ireland. Um, about just collecting in general. I've actually been figuring once I move, I'm going to just start leaning more into emulation than actual hardware. Uh, Clique Vision I still like to have original because there's something to be said for the terrible joystick. It kind of brings me back. But for the NES, NES Classic and the SNES Classic, they just fit the bill so well that I cannot imagine the benefit by just loading up a cartridge or a game pack in this, in this case into the NES. That's just madness, especially when games are still kind of going for stupid money. Uh, who wants to pay $500 to play a game I could just get off the internet? Not that I'm encouraging piracy, but these are 30 year old games, so let's get real here. If. If Nintendo had an easier way of giving everyone the games that you can't um, find anywhere else, let me explain. You, uh, Nintendo is never going to release games like RC Pro Am or um, Anticipation, or what else? Battle Toads for their for their Switch system because of Rare. They lost the license. Same thing with Mike Tyson's Punch Out. You'll get Punch Out with Mr. Dream, but you won't get Mike Tyson's Punch Out. The licensing stuff, a lot of these games are going to be lost to history, so for that reason, <clears throat> I think, you know, keep those ROMs flowing. And 
in that for that case, I, I I think that might be a better option than loading you know loading up cartridges or game packs and playing it. Because the same controller, same solid controller, it's much better. Uh, the emulators on the Wii, that's pretty cool too. The only problem I have with the Wii is that it's a temperamental little system. At least mine is. I looked away from the screen for two seconds, dryer lint, <laughs> and I crashed. Um. Yeah, so my Wii right now does not want to play uh, discs. So it's a little bit temperamental, so I hate having that hooked up. What I really want to do though, besides rebuild my arcade cabinet, is kind of get maybe like a little a little emulation machine, like I guess a, a Raspberry Pi, like all those people used to, used to tell everyone on the internet, on Facebook, during the great NES Classic shortage of 2016, 17, whatever. So I might just do that instead. Maybe just keep all the consoles and boxes and games stored close by, but not, you know, prominent like it is right now, which you can't see because my, uh, my camera's not on. I don't like turning it on. I look like crap. Um, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up for the night because I've got work in the morning. Uh, if you watch this in the future and you know of any, uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, um, requests, please don't be shy and let me know. Um, I'm going to have a few episodes coming out. They're not going to be video game related. They're more pop culture-y uh, because I'm expanding out a little bit. So I hope you don't mind. And uh, yeah, you load, so just to answer this, you load games on SD or USB for Wii. Okay, yeah. Yeah, maybe I will break out the Wii one day. Maybe it's worth it. I'm not a big fan of the Wii controllers, though. I like I like the, SD, the, the, the old NES controllers. And let's see what happens with the Genesis that's coming out. The... Uh, Genesis Classic, because if you could hack that thing, then I have the trifecta right there. And I have the PlayStation Classic 2 my girlfriend got me. I have not played with that yet, and I'm sorry if you're listening to this one. Um, it's not that I don't like it, I just haven't had a chance. Been busy. Crazy year so far, it's only April. Um, but uh, that I might play with a little bit soon. That is not as turnkey as the NES and SNES Classic or the Wii emulation. And uh, the Odroid Day for emulation. I'm gonna give it, I gotta look that up. That sounds interesting, actually. Hmm. There are a few consoles where I'm not gonna spend the money, so. Like, uh, I don't know if I wanna spend the money on a, uh, on a Turbo Graphics or a PC Engine. Although they're not that expensive, but just the games. Ugh, I don't have the patience. Or get, like, a. get one of those EverDrives. Anyway, I was saying goodbye, so let me try that again. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to leave for the night. Um, thank you, you guys. Thank you for the comments for, for watching. It turned out better than I thought. I thought this was going to be like me and a few crickets. But, uh, Sydney, good seeing you again. Dryerlyn, thank you for all the comments. Guys, if, uh, if anything else, please leave a comment. So leave me a message. Follow me on the Facebook, uh, t t facebook.com, TV Games. Uh, otherwise, have a great night. And also, I have to turn this off. There it goes. <laughs> All right, once again, have a good night.